thugs, and a cult. And the left is a cult. They want to force our kids to live the way they want them to live. They want to take over our society. And it's not about equality. It's not about tolerance. It's about being dominated. It's about power. I always hear these psychologists and people like Gore Vidal. I read some of his books. Pretty smart guy. I agree with him on a lot of historical perspectives. Saying sex is about power. Well, maybe in his weird homoerotic world, it was about power. In my world, it's about love, it's about pleasure, it's about trust, it's about intimacy, it's about enjoyment, it's about stress relief, it's about, most importantly, procreation. And let's not forget why it's the main drive. Beyond food and water, folks, it's sex. And it's because it's why we exist. It's the driving force of procreation, of reproduction. And when you target that, you target the species. And I look at the entire attack system, the entire attack checklist of what we're under, and it is what I would do if I was space aliens here masquerading as humans if I wanted to kill humanity. I mean, that, that's it. The, I'm not saying it's space aliens. You know that. I'm, I'm just saying if I was a robot computer analyzing this, I would say alien intelligence, you know, Crime analysis, masquerading as humans on the surface of Earth, overthrow of civilization, cutting off energy supplies, stifling development, enslaving public, dumbing down population, attacking fertility rates, stifling space exploration for operation termination of population, crime projection, bioweapons developed by alien species after weakening of population will cause mass collapse and eradication of Homo sapiens sapien on planet Terra. That's basically it. Look at a science fiction movie like The Thing where it says, you know, how many hours till total world population infected? 3,785 hours. Prime projection, 98%. I mean, it's like that. And I'm just sitting here watching the robots go online, reading the elite's books, how they're going to kill everybody. And I'm just like, oh, now they're going to sh shut the roads down and put taxes by the mile. And now they're going to... And, it, it, and I'm just sitting here watching it. Run. We are your friends. Yeah, and Rachel Maddow's Don't Run, We Are Your Friends. I mean, you know, Obamacare helps you. Ah, yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's talk to Alan in Colorado on KHNC 1360 AM. God bless you for holding Alan and putting up with me. You're on the air. Go ahead. God bless you, sir, and thank you very much. How are you today? Um, you know, I'm pretty fired up, and I've been a little bit nasty today because this stuff's upsetting me. Well, talking about being fired up, um, one of the 45, 50 million strong in uh, the United States, depending on which statistic that you uh, look at, uh, the uh, disabled community, I happen to be uh, in the blind demographic. Uh, or if you want to be politically correct, uh, visually impaired, side challenged. Um, you know, you talk a lot, um, since I found you anyway, over the past uh, three weeks or a month, about uh, the domination that we're under uh, by our federal government. My question deals with the Declaration of Independence. Uh, the, the question kind of goes like this. Do you agree that the Declaration of Independence is the foundational document upon which the uh, Constitution rests. Yes, it is the kickoff of the whole shebang, more important than the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Uh, it states it's our right as sentient individuals to throw off the bonds of an enslaving government when it engages in these type of infractions. And you read what was done in the lead up to July 4th, 1776, and the signing of the Declaration, the Unanimous Declaration of Independence, and it is a shadow of the flagrant abuse and tyranny we languish under today. I would stand in agreement with you on that, sir. Um, in the first uh, couple of sentences of the Declaration of Independence, I believe you were alluding to this a second ago, uh, it's our right, our duty. if you will, our duty, our, our responsibility, 
to uh, throw off go that far. to throw off a tyrannical government. In fact, you know, people shouldn't dissolve governments lightly or for transient means. But when, in the course of human events, it becomes time to admit you're under a tyranny, it's got to be done. To paraphrase, stay there. I'm going to come back, Alan. Finish up with you. I'm going to hurry to Kevin, uh, and then to Jared, and then to uh, uh, Gerald. Brian and others, 800-259-9231. And Anthony Gucciardi is going to pop in briefly with some news We're as well. March. That's right, a frontal assault because the people aren't aware of the enemy. It's our job to do as much damage as we can by absolutely just frying the enemy's operations by throwing it right in their face what scum they are. And it's effective and it's happening Huge news blitz coming up. Anthony Gucciardi's here with amazing news on Alzheimer's, uh, antipsychotic and psychotropic drugs, and more. We'll be talking to him here in just a few minutes, but right now, let's go ahead. You know, I'm teleprompter free and I am uh, makeup free. I don't put makeup on, on TV, but I guess I really should because I look like a bowling ball in my head or something in here, so shiny because the lights are so good and everything. You know, we are simulcasting also uh, on the radio uh, TV at infowars.com forward slash show. And the power of you, the people, of we, the people, taking that link and sending it to friends and family and neighbors and Facebook and Twitter is exponential. And that's why we're in the top six terrestrial radio shows. And you can say clearly the number one political news talk show in the world by every major metric. Uh, of course, the ultimate brass ring victory is in Politico today. It goes to Matt Drudge, congratulations. This is about the 15th year running I've seen them have to admit this. More traffic in political news and news in general than Facebook uh, and of course the New York Times and other publications combined. And Politico certainly doesn't like having to report that to everyone. That's a testament of the David versus Goliath that what does Drudge do? He links to government documents. He links to YouTube videos. He links to mainstream media. He links to alternative media. He just links to what's interesting, and he's got his finger on the pulse of that. I mean, Drudge has been linking to us for 10 years. We were growing before he ever did that, but, you know, when Drudge links to us, half our traffic of the day is a Drudge link. So instead of getting a million visitors, we get 2 million visitors. And, of course, uh, the, they whitewash and say Drudge has 2 million original visitors a day. Oh, give me a break. I can look at the metrics just on the Google Analytics alone. If we've got over a million visitors a day just to InfoWars, and then I can see Drudge, he's probably getting 10 million individual visitors a day conservatively. But again, so even when they admit he's number one, they give a little backhanded baloney slap. But it doesn't matter. Just like Alexa just delisted every libertarian and conservative site basically a year ago, now everybody just admits they're a joke. According to them, we have no viewers, no listeners, it's all over. Even though we're going straight up on the Google internal stuff and every other metric we've got. Again, I don't want to digress. I said I'd go to your phone calls. Uh, and the caller just hung up from Colorado. I was going to go back to him. Kevin in Florida, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you so much, Alex. I just want to say me and my brother are huge supporters of your guys' show. From Thank you. The Buying of the T-shirts to the hardcore nutraceuticals, which are awesome. I actually just took some silver bullet this morning from Nation Ironon as well. Uh, so they're awesome. We appreciate that. Thank you. But my question to you is about this whole cashless society thing. Um, I realize now that a lot of companies are strictly going to where you have to get direct deposit or these ridiculous money cards. Great point. The big six banks or the big five banks now said two years ago they got a war on cash, they're going to phase it out so they can then tax you corporately to, to ha even have money in their banks. And when you make a purchase, they're going to tax you a huge amount. So it's a huge scam. They're competing with cash. And yes, companies, businesses, corporations, they're trying to make you do automatic money transfers. They're trying to make you only use credit cards. Now businesses, big corporations won't try to take a 20 I don't usually go to Amazon, uh, not Amazon, um, the name of the coffee place um, with the stupid uh, goddess Starbucks. Excuse me, I'm going to have one of those moments. I start trying to hurry to get your calls, and then I you know, forget basic stuff. But I was in a small town with my kids. There was a Starbucks. It's better than McDonald's. I went in there and got some milk and apples and stuff, and I gave them a 50. And I was buying like $25 worth of stuff, a couple coffees and drinks, all this stuff. And they go, sir, do you have anything smaller? 
And I said, this isn't 100, but 100 didn't even want it used to be. They said, well, sir, they don't even want us to take cash. And more and more, that's what you see. So, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. No, I agree. I recently found out, too, that um, a lot of the reasons, not just because of the reasons that you stated, but the corporations get major, major tax breaks if they do this, like you said, so they can tax it. And I think it's funny because me and my brother always joke about it, like the reactions that you get from other people when you spend with cash. Because I try and pay totally in cash, and everybody automatically thinks you're a drug dealer or it's just the, the, just the looks that you get. And then, when you, like you said, when you pay with a 20, they bring out the market to make sure it's real. And I just think, like you said, it's just it's another way for total and utter control by the government. Well, look at all the control with the credit card numbers getting stolen. I mean, every couple months they call up and go, your credit card's canceled. Uh, it was compromised. I mean, that's probably happened five times this year. Uh, everybody I know is having their accounts grabbed, stuff stolen. I mean, it, because it's designed to not work to make us go to biometrics. They admit that to thumb scan, face scan when you use a card. So absolutely, we got to keep cash alive. We've got to use it as much as we can because once they've gotten rid of cash, Katie, bar the door. I appreciate your call. Great point. Let's just take one more call and I'll have Anthony report his news. I'll get to the news then come back to Brian, uh, Jared, and Steve. But let's go to Gerald in Arkansas first. You're on the air. He wants to talk about a bank system scam. Go ahead. Well, the, the biggest scam, Alex, uh, first, uh, the Bible, I know you believe the Bible, a King James Version for me, but yes. uh, first, you six ten. the love of money is the root of all evil. The, the problem is our founding fathers said the only real money has to be backed by gold or silver. That's still in effect. Now, unless you mend the Constitution, that's not changed. So no debt can be paid with, with fiat uh, currency. So... Uh, where we're at now, uh, the, the digital age, Alex, and I know you know all this, but I'm, I don't think the public really gets it. And I'm talking about your followers and most everybody I've talked to. When you went to trillions, Alex, it blows the mind. That people lose all perspective because you can't be real talking about trillions. There's not enough ink and paper to print that, so they get on a computer. What power that is. That's the biggest scam of all. And now they've created not just fractional reserve banking in the last 200 years where they have $1 in the bank and loan out 10 or or $1,000, loan out 10000 Then they started making all these derivatives. There's hundreds of different corporate devices or corporate instruments where they'll sell the same house a hundred times. Oh, but they don't get in trouble for fraud. The same big banks running the aircraft that ship the drugs, laundering the drug money, paying the hitmen. But when you go in and you're going to buy dinner for say six, seven people you're with and it's $75 and you give them a hundred, the waitress looks at you like you're Al Qaeda. This is legal tender, P brain. It says Federal Reserve on it. It is a fraud, but it's less of a fraud than the digital. So when they give me trouble about cash, baby, you get a speech. And my kids used to go, oh, please, Dad. Now they give the speech. Or, or they'll check it to see if it's counterfeit. And I go, ma'am, all the money's counterfeit. They go, excuse me? And I go, well, you just marked my 50 or my 20 with your little marker to see if it's real. It's all Federal Reserve note. It should say U.S. note. Even that's fiat, but at least it's a U.S. note. Do you understand the Federal Reserve's private? And now people seem to know it. I appreciate your call. Great point, Gerald. Excellent point. Uh, we'll get to everybody else that's holding before the transmission ends. I've got a lot of news to cover in a short time to get there. Uh, Anthony Gucciardi is one of our health writers here, and I wanted him to come in because uh, he was telling me about some amazing news developments he's going to be writing on. Uh, Anthony, tell us about some of these new developments. Well, there's a new study that antipsychotic drugs actually shrink brain matter, and we'll talk about that a little bit. We've got. Some By the way, how many times have I said it shrinks your brain? A million times. We've but Ritalin really does it. it. Adderall really does it. It actually shrinks the brain up to one third. It makes you feel like a total zombie. Then we have a weird little story here that's interesting to me. Psychopaths may not yawn along with you. So you know how yawns are contagious. Apparently, psychopaths are so self-centered and their brains are so wired differently that they won't catch yawns. Is that called psychosomatic when somebody farts, you want to fart? I'm sorry to be gross, but that's true. Or somebody burps, you want to burp. Or somebody yawns, you want to yawn. Yeah, it's all contagious because you're Somebody brain, wants to Hillary, you want to Hillary. You want to Hillary. That's what I want to do. I want to do the uh, Hillary laugh. And then Alzheimer's disease.